All right, today we're going to talk about whether or not an OIG interview is actually voluntary. So when an OIG agent comes to your office or emails you or calls you and asks you for your interview, is it really voluntary? And we're going to talk about how your decision about whether or not to be interviewed depends a lot on where you work and how much you like your job. Welcome to OMG, it's the OIG, a serious look at Office of Inspector General Investigations. My name is Sarah Croft. I'm a lawyer here in Washington, D.C., and we represent individuals, government employees, and federal government contractors and help them uh, navigate OIG investigations. If you want to get in touch with us, all our contact information is below. All right, a lot of our clients contact us after they've been asked for an interview, but before they've decided whether or not to be interviewed. And the first thing to understand when you're deciding whether or not to agree to an interview is the difference between a voluntary and an involuntary interview. So a voluntary interview is exactly what it sounds like. It's when you agree to be interviewed by the OIG voluntarily. No one is forcing you to be there. You don't have to answer questions, but it's completely voluntary on your part. The second kind of OIG interview is the involuntary interview. That's the kind of interview when you are a federal government employee and the OIG tells you that it's an involuntary interview, meaning that if you don't cooperate and if you don't agree to be interviewed or don't sit for the interview, you can be fired. So that is involuntary. You are being compelled to appear for the interview. And that's a very important distinction for an issue, a matter we're going to talk about in just one minute. All right, whether or not you agree to the interview depends first on where you work. So if you are a federal employee, you work at the agency uh, where the OIG is from, then they can make it involuntary. They can force you either to choose between your job or choose to be interviewed. So if you're a federal employee, you have fewer options than if you're not a federal employee. If you're not a federal employee, you work outside the agency, you work for a government contractor, depending on your contract, or you work just for a private company, or you're retired or used to work for the federal government, you do not have to agree to an OIG interview. They can't subpoena you, in other words, and force you to appear. Now, the one exception to that is the Department of Defense. So the Department of Defense OIG does have broader powers than most of the OIGs, and the DOD OIG can actually subpoena witnesses to sit and give testimony, even if they do not work for the federal government. All right, at the beginning I said that part of your thinking about whether or not you're going to agree to an interview depends on how much you like your job. Because it is an option when you're a federal employee to sit for an interview or quit your job. Because as I said, they can't force you to be interviewed uh, and testify against yourself if you no longer work for the agency, unless it's Department of Defense. So many of our clients, or some of our clients, do agree and decide to quit their job rather than sit for the interview. Now that's because we've talked with them, we've talked through the risks of the interview, what they might have to say during the interview, and how much uh, harm they could do to their legal position if they are interviewed at that point. This is most often when there is an underlying criminal investigation, or we think there might be a criminal investigation down the road. It's obviously a very big decision to quit your job. People who work in the federal government enjoy working there. It's a safe, stable, secure, often well-paying position, and most people do not want to leave. But it is an option, and it's part of the analysis that we'll do with you as your lawyer to talk through the risks of the interview and the possibility that you may leave your job rather than be interviewed. All right, if the interview is involuntary, if you're a federal employee and they are forcing you to be interviewed, there are certain rights that you have. Anything you say during that interview cannot be used against you in a later criminal investigation. So there are some rights that your lawyer can help explain to you. Make sure you understand fully what your rights are and what risks still exist. Because just because they can't use your statements against you, the ones that you made during the interview, they can take what you say during the interview and go investigate other leads, other witnesses, find other documents. And so sitting for the interview can still create risks, even if the government can't use your actual words against the criminal investigation. So there's a lot of moving parts when you're talking about agreeing to an interview that could be part of a criminal investigation. And this is particularly where having a lawyer who's experienced in criminal cases, as well as OIG investigations, is really helpful because you want to think through all the possible risks and all the possible rewards of sitting for that interview. All right, I hope this information about involuntary and voluntary interviews was helpful. Uh, if you'd like to get in touch with us or you're under OIG in investigation and want to talk to us, 
All of our contact information is below. There's also a link to our blog called Grand Jury Target, and there's a whole bunch of articles on there about OIG investigations so you can learn more. And there's also a link to our ebook about OIG investigations, and that'll give you all the information about OIG investigations from start to finish. Thanks very much for watching.